learners. Today, the 11th of May 2020, uh, we are going to take our third lesson of English and we are going to cover active and passive voice. This is a very sensitive part of uh, English and uh, I want you to be very keen where you are to understand how we change active to passive voice and vice versa. So we are going to start by looking at the meaning of uh, the meaning of uh, a subject and an object because subject and object is what entails the active and passive voice. So in the active voice we are going to look at the subject. The subject will come will come first in the sentence. Take an example, a simple example like talk of uh, the lady arranges flowers. The lady arranges flowers. We have that part, the lady. The lady arranges. Arranges flowers. Let's have, let, us, let us observe what is the subject in this manner and what is the object in this manner. So the lady here, the lady, this is the subject. And ask yourself, what is the subject now? This is the doer of an action in a sentence. The lady is arranging the flowers. So the flowers are being arranged by who? By the lady. So the lady is the doer of the action. That one becomes what? The subject. And then you have the object. Whatever is being, uh, the, whatever the action is being done to, whoever the action is being done to, like you talk of the flowers. The flowers are the ones that are being arranged. So we talk of that is the what? The object. The so flowers here will be the object. So if you are able to identify what is a subject and what is an object in this manner, then we are going to get it very, very, very simpler to answer questions dealing with active and passive voice. So let us go to our first example, having known the meaning of a subject and an object. So Active and passive voice goes to the tense. We are going to begin with the present, present tense. And under the present tense, we can give uh, two examples or three examples. Number one, we have the boy writes a letter. The boy writes a letter. The boy writes a letter. The, the subject in this manner is the boy. This is our subject. Rights is the verb, the action that is being done. And the action is done to what? It's done to the letter. So the letter becomes our object. It's our object in that one. So we call it the active voice because the subject comes first in the sentence and the object comes last. So when we now begin now with the, with the, with the object, saying that a letter, a letter is written, a letter is written by the book. We now begin with the word, with the object, to say a letter. And Lana, I'm emphasizing something here. We have to add the article R. The article R must be observed. You can't just say that letter is written by the boy you must write that article a letter because you can get another one the boy writes the letter so you have to be very very keen there you will say the boy the letter is written by the boy the article that is there must be observed that's why we have begun a letter is written we will maintain that because it is present simple tense writes as i talk of is written by the boy. A letter is written by the boy. Then I'm um, at example two. We'll talk of uh, they are drawing pictures. They are drawing drawing pictures. If you look at this sentence, there is a word drawing here. Drawing is present continuous tense, an action that is ongoing. 
they are in the process of drawing the pictures. That's why we say, when we are going to change this, we'll begin with pictures. That is the object. Pictures are. Because we're still continuing, are being. We'll add that being. Are being. Are being drawn. Drawn by them. By them. Look at they. They becomes them in the in the in the passive part. Pictures are being drawn by them. They are drawing pictures. So this being tells us that that action was ongoing. It was present participle or present continuous tense. That's why we are putting that. I've written it under present tense because it is not yet past. It is still something that is ongoing. So that's so much to deal with. Or I can give more, one more example. Another example is uh, I sing a song. Let me see, Lana, if you can get that. I sing. I sing a song. I sing a song. It's a very simple one. I sing. Example three. I sing a song. Just begin with knowing I is the subject in this manner, sing is the verb, and then a song is the sub is the is the object. That is whatever is done in that sentence. So we'll begin by a song. A song, a song, a song, a song is sung. Sung with you. It's sung by me. What do you say? But we can't say a song is sung by I. When you are writing sentences in the active voice, uh, you talk of I. This is a nominative pronoun. I sing a song. So when it comes to the passive voice, we talk of the what? The objective pronoun will now come last there. The object part. A song is sung by me. You can now say a song is sung by I. I hope you are together, Lana. So, so much for the present tense. Let's go to the second aspect. The second aspect, that is the, the past. The past tense. Active and passive voice in the past is the simplest. Here we'll be dealing with a sentence like the hunter killed a lion. The hunter killed. A lion. In this manner, we are seeing the, sub the subject. The hunter here is our subject. Killed is the verb. That is what was done. And was done to who? To a lion. So a lion then becomes our object. Hence, when we are now changing the sentence into passive voice, we are going to begin with what? A lion. A lion. A lion was. Because with the past tense, look at the word killed there, the past tense. So a lion was. Was killed. A lion was killed by the hunter. By the what? By the hunter. You have to adhere to the article I mentioned that. They. They must come there. Don't say a hunter was killed by a hunter. A, a lion was killed by a hunter. No. The article there was there. So a lion was killed by the hunter. It's very, very clear. Because this past tense we use was killed. Example two, we are going to talk of uh, the carpenter was making a box. The carpenter was making was making a box. The carpenter was making a box. Very good sentence. So the carpenter here is going to be our subject, as usual. Making. Making there is our verb. And then a box becomes our, our object. So begin a box. A box. A box. Was being made. Because making it he was making the camera was in the process of making this particular box that's why you talk of uh, a box was being being made 
being made by by the the captain. Lana, I hope you are able to identify to continue to identify the subject, the verb, and the object in that manner. A box was being made. Made here is the past participle part of the verb make. It is make, made, made. We mentioned prior, we mentioned sing. I sing a song. A song is sung. It is sing, sung with A, and sung with this. If you, re, if you can still, still remember the verbs, uh, uh, the regular verbs and the irregular verbs. Those are examples of regular verbs that form their past tense by adding A, sing, sung with A, then sung with you. Here we have make, made, and made, and others. So much to do with past tense, let's go to the hard one. Or I can add one more under that. Example three. We're going to see well. Did he finish the work? It's a question. Did he finish? Did he finish the work? Did he finish the work? It's a question. At times when we have brought questions to change, learners get it very hard. So did he finish the work? So when we are doing this, you begin with the was. Was the work finished by him? It's a question, it becomes very tricky. Was the work, was the work finished? Was the work, was the work finished? Finished by him. That's a point of uh, repeating myself. We need, we still need to look at, did he finish the work? So was the work finished by him? We now use the object, objective uh, a pronoun in that manner. You can't say, was the work finished by he? No. Was the work finished by? By him. So much of that learner, let us go to the, the, the the, the second last part, that is the future tense. The future tense. Future tense become our third tense. So look at the present. We are going to the past, and now we are in the future tense. Example of sentences in the in the future becomes number one. He will bring money. It is something that is yet to come. He will bring. He will bring money. He will bring money. So, still identify he is the subject. Who will bring? This is the verb. And then money is the object. We begin object, money. If you are very keen, there is no article before money. There is no a money. Money is uncountable. So, we can't put any article there. We say money. Money will be brought. Will be brought. Brought by by him. It's he. So money will be brought by by him. He will bring man. Money will be brought by him. The objective, uh, the objective pronoun must come there. This is the example one. Then two. We have you will drive a car. You will drive a car. You begin a car. A car. A car will be driven by by you. You remains you even in the objective part. It is you, you. A car will be driven by you. Lana, remember, we must put a past, a present participle when writing a sentence in the passive voice. A car was driven. Yeah. Food was eaten. You can't say food was ate. Food was eaten by John. A past participle must come there. And we can't write a past participle in the active voice. One, once you begin with a, with, a, with a subject, you will drive. You can't say you will driven. It's very wrong. A car will be driven by you. 
The last example, you might write here where I number one. The last example, Roman 3, under that, I shall do this work. I shall do, I shall do this work. I shall do this work. Begin with, this work will be done. This work will be done. Done by me. By me. It is you doing the work. That's why we are begin. I shall do this work. So we begin this work. Remember, whenever I say mention the first part, the part that we all must look at the article. So I shall do this work. So begin this work. Don't say work will be done. This work will be done by me. Lama I hope you are together. So, coming to the last part is what we normally call the commands. The commands. Giving my learners at the time. When a command is given, what should we say? Commands. Let me just say commands. When a command is given, example Roman 1, Bring a packet of milk. Bring a packet. Packet of milk. Bring a packet of milk. How this sentence is in the active voice. This one is in the active voice. Bring a packet of milk. Bring a packet of milk. So how do we change that? It's a command. It's something that you can't answer. It's not a question. It's not a statement, but it's somebody, somebody's commanding. Bring it. Go home. So when such are, are given in a, you know, such an examination, what should we do? We talk of let. Let a packet of milk be brought. It's a, it's a command. So we bring the let. Let a packet. Let a packet of milk, of milk be brought. Let a packet of milk be brought. Bring a packet of milk. Let a packet of milk be, do, be brought. That is what how we do them. That is A. B. Return this book to him. Return this book to him. How do we make that? Return this book to him. You say, let this book be returned. Let this book be returned to him. Begin with let. Let this book. Let this book be returned. To him. The last example, hang the map, hang the map on the wall. Hang the map on the wall. This is a very good command. Hang the map on the wall. You have no obligation but to do it because it's a command. Somebody's command you need to do. Like I know teachers command in school. Go out. You can't answer that. You have to go do whatever the teacher said. So hang the map on the wall. You'll say, let the map be hung. The space there is small. Let me write up here. Let the map be hung. Be hung on the wall. Let the map be hung on the wall. So I want to concentrate more on my last example because of one thing. I know learners have problem with the use of hang. A lot of learners have that, that problem. Hang the map on the wall. Let the map be hung on the on the wall. Why do we say hang? The, the verb hang. The verb to hang has a lot of difficulty 
most learners have problem in this verb. So let me take this short time to finalize my lesson with this. The verb han in the root verb becomes han. This is han of suspending. You can you suspend a cloth on a line. You suspend a hanger on the wall. That is to hang. So in the past tense, we talk of hang you. I can say, mother hung the cloth on the line. She did it yesterday, mother. She did it yesterday, so mother hung the clothes. Don't say mother hung it. Mother hung the clothes yesterday. So that is, this is the root verb. Present tense, this is past. Past tense, in that manner, this is present. And then in the participle, it still becomes hung. And in the past participle. That's why we have done that. Let the mark be hung. This is past participle. So remain that this is for suspending, suspending something on a, a higher ground, like a relation of the wall on the line, and etc. We hang something, hang, hang, hang with you. When it comes to hang for killing, we have another hang for killing. Like you know that long time ago thieves were being hung when they made the certain offenses. So. We talk of the word ham, that's the root verb. We will hang you tomorrow. That is the root verb. It becomes same hang with the word of suspend. The past tense of that hang will come uh, hanged. She was hanged yesterday. So we talk of hang with a. Don't put hang with you at the hang with you now. No. It becomes still say the one that we have mentioned here, hang. Hung, the thief was hung yesterday. The thief, the, the participle will simply become hung. But this one remain only for killing, when somebody is being killed. The thief was hanged. We will, uh, she was hanged. Eh? So if hanging will still remain the same. The participle part and the past tense of hanging for killing become the same. And then this one is for suspending. That's why in our issue here, it was a map that was being hung. A map was being hung. So you can't talk of the map is was killing himself. The map, when we talk of a map, we talk of the hanging for suspending, not hanging for killing. Lana, I hope we have gotten that part well. So when we talk about commands, they become different. When somebody has commanded to do something, we say let. Let the mark be hung on the wall. The, the first part of it was hang the mark on the wall. Mm. Remove the plates from the table. That's a, an example I've given you. Remove the plates from the table. Maybe you have been told several by your mother or by father do that. So we say, let the plates be removed from what? From the table. The, the, that verb there must be past participle, and that is our key point that whenever whatever you are uh, anytime you are changing from active to passive the verb there must be in past participle whether in present tense whether in past tense whether in participle whether in commands remember that in the passive part we must have a participle and we must have a what an objective pronoun being used. Like the car was washed by Mark. Who can tell me the voice that sentence is? The car was washed by Mark. Look at that. Or let me say, the car was washed by him. We are seeing him there. That is an, an objective pronoun. And we are seeing was washed. Meaning, we have begun with the car. That is the object. Meaning that is a passive voice. We have begun with the what? With the object. Whatever was uh, an action was done to. That was the car. The car was washed by him. So in the happy voice we say, he washed the car. Look at how simple it is. Now begin with he. Whoever washed the what? The car. He washed the car. Uh, the car was washed by him. Lana, I don't have more to say. I only uh, give an exercise, a short exercise here in uh, page 82. Let me write the page in black and white here. So 
uh, we're going to do an exercise. Page uh, 82. Down to page 83. So we have their exercise. Exercise 59. 59, you try, you try the all of it. All of it, then exercise. Exercise 60. And then lastly, exercise 61. You have all the time at home, so practice this, these three exercises, all of them. Practice all the exercises. And then, took a snap of whatever you have done and post it on the wall, the wall that your parents know. So I'll be able to check your work from there. If you're making any mistake, I'll be able to realize from these three exercises and correct you where necessary. Thank you. Have a blessed afternoon.